In this issue of Real Magic Magazine, John Lovett continues his conversation with world-famous aerialist Philippe Petit. This time, Philippe discusses the importance of creativity and practice, and how producing a dove was nearly his downfall. Uh, and since we're talking about magic, I'll make a little deviation and I have to share a story about Israel since it was a walk for peace, you know. I thought what better symbol that in the middle of the wire, I'm a magician, I should be able to do that. If I, with one hand only, the other is holding the board, if I could produce, you know, the word for making appear, if I could make appear a dove, wow. the symbol of peace. So it was very hard to find a dove in Israel, but I find a little one, and I've never done, so I bought books about, you know, dove. And in my hotel room in Israel, which was the departure of the walk, I practiced with a dove, you know, with a silk in my special big pocket. And then I was pretty good, except each time I would throw the, the dove in the room, she would not fly, she would go boop, boop, and bang onto the wall, but I thought, Okay, the wall, the room is too small, a yeah. bird needs space, but it's going to be fabulous tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow, I'm now the day of the show, uh, 80,000 people, and uh, the mayor of Jerusalem, Teddy Collect, very nervous, you know. Um, and then I start the walk, and exactly as planned, in the middle of the walk, I stand on one leg, and with one hand I take the silk, and with one hand out of the silk comes the dove, and the people go crazy. And then in the most magnificent gesture, I free the dove in the air. And you know what happened? The dove didn't fly. She went tut, 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 and she ended up on my head. And the people were screaming, thinking this guy with his dove, how many years of practice, you know, he must eat and sleep with them. So now I grabbed the <laughs> bird. And then as elegantly as I can, for the second time, I throw the bird in the azure. And the <laughs> bird, who now I understand, was ne didn't go to a flying school, yeah. went tut, 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 and landed up at the end of my balancing pole total out of balance. It's a reflex. I sit down to uh, lower my center yeah. of gravity. We are among magicians. I give you my secret. Yeah. I sit down and now I think, what do I do? What am I going to do? And I salute and people were screaming. And at the end of the salute, I put back my hand on the pole, but I bang and the bang dislodged the little bird yeah. who for the third time goes <laughs> thup, 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 and land on the wire. And she will stay on the wire for the entire yeah. crossing. Yeah. And then a helicopter picks me up and, and the people were delirious. Yeah. They, they, they never saw such beautiful, professional work with a dove. And now you know the, the story. That's fantastic. Also in issue 46, Kainoa Harbottle shares a move that demonstrates the beauty of complexity. I tend to like complexity. Let me show you a move that might feel a little complex the first time you try it, but it's worth the beauty that you get to, to uh, create with it. Uh, most people know the utility paths, right? I have three coins here, and I have three coins there, right? I can show three coins to this side of the room, and three coins to this side of the room. All I'm doing is just tossing, I have an extra coin, I'm just tossing these, the top two coins across, the bottom coin stays by friction in my finger palm. But what if you could do that a little bit more cleanly? Why do you toss these coins around if they're so important? Also, why can't you just do it from a fan. Why can't I say, oh, I hear the, these are three coins, and here are three coins. This is the fingertip utility pass. This is a move that is invented by Michael Gallo. Um, I do it slightly differently than he does, but I'm going to just show you the mechanics of it. It's an incredibly useful move, and it doesn't look like anything happens when you do it. John Armstrong talks about the advantages of surprise endings. David Regal is joined by a special guest, and Doc Eason and Garrett Thomas discuss how to build a team when working in a bar or restaurant. I did a uh, lecture in Florida some years ago now. A guy comes up and he, uh, you know, said, I work in this Ruby Tuesdays over there every, you know, every Wednesday night. And I've been trying to get behind the bar and there's two women behind the bar and they won't let me behind the bar. You know, what, what do I do? Well, remember this phrase, what's in it for me? You want to do tricks in the bar? I'm the bar owner? Yeah? What's in it for me? How is it that what you do is going to benefit me? Because that's what the bottom line is anywhere, okay? I got the lovely Sammy behind the bar here. She's efficient, she's beautiful, and she just, you know, probably makes tons of money here in Oigo. But I want her on my side. So having that rapport with the bartender is... So I said to him, I said, do this. Um, next time you go in there saying, Hey, I got a couple people coming in there, VIPs or big heavy rollers and stuff. Uh, I w could I get back there and just do like, make, like maybe five minutes, okay? Have 10 minutes geared up, but five minutes, okay? 
Well, with that situation involved, you know, and it's, assuming you've scoped out the bar and realized where the best place to work is and where, you, where you're going to orient these guys, have some friends come in. Not magician friends, okay? Because magicians are cheap. That means you. <laughs> You want them, you want these guys to be drinking Crown Royal, you want them to drink Chivas, and at the end of it, they throw out a $20 bill, and even if they didn't throw the 20, you reach in your pocket, pull a $20 bill out and go, hey guys, thanks very much. Sammy, this one's for you, baby, okay? You drop a $20 bill in their tip jar, suddenly, they're going, when can, when, when can you come back? Can you come back later tonight? Oh yeah, I think we can maybe work that out. That was advice, and he fired right back to me, fired right back to me and said, I can't believe it worked like a charm. Of course it did. What's in it for me? You know? As always, we've got tricks to teach you. In this issue, they're from Alexander Rohin and Eric Jones. And Move Monkeys return to Real Magic with four great moves from Chris Mayhew. I'm going to show you a cool little color change using a car, okay? Uh, if you push it downwards through the fingers, right? You should be able to get it to, <clears throat> why isn't it working? Um, oh, you know what, maybe instead of downwards, you have to go upwards, you have to go upwards. Let's try it. If you do this and push it upwards, you should what? be able to get, yes, take it, touch it. <laughs> All this and much, much more. It's Real Magic Magazine, television for magicians.